Microsoft recently announced new Get Data functionality for Excel Online. It is being rolled out this year, 2022. In the meantime, you can use Office Scripts to perform web scraping to obtain data from online resources like GitHub. In this video, I demo Office Scripts code that uses the fetch function to obtain a CSV file without using an interface, which is an artifice that structures returned data. I also show a VBA script that performs the same action for comparison purposes. Whilst Office Scripts runs online, VBA does not, and is therefore restricted to working only on your machine. With the ever-expanding role of cloud tools, data centers, and the internet through mobile devices and other machines, on-premise solutions like VBA are becoming non-relevant. VBA was popular because of the simplicity of writing Visual Basic. You could automate a business process and save your business time and money. But if your business is working online with collaborative tools like Teams and Excel Online, VBA is not able to assist there. However, Office Scripts is. I provide a link to the code used in this video at the end of this video, as well as in its description. Let's run the VBA code first. We can see it is getting data successfully. Now let's run the Office Script equivalent code. We can see it creates a new sheet to place the retrieved data into. There is also notification of the number of rows contained in the data and the number of cells used to hold that data. These values are important for keeping track of size limits and more on that later in the video. Here is the same Office Script running, but this time using a URL to a GitHub repository. The repos in that GitHub account are returned to the worksheet. In Excel Online, we cannot as yet create queries or connect to external data. If you first create those queries using Excel Desktop and then upload that workbook to SharePoint, you will be able to visualize the query and connections pane but the functionality to refresh those queries and connections does not exist. Using the fetch function in Office Scripts allows you to obtain data from remote URLs, despite this lack of functionality in Excel Online. To demo this, I remove the values from some cells and attempt to refresh the query. Here you can see it appears to show data refreshing, but that is not the case as you can see here. The cells are still empty and have not been refreshed. So in Excel Online, in the Automate menu, I'm going to use the Record Actions option. And I'm going to record uh, me attempting to refresh the data set. So I'll click on the refresh all connections and the record actions pane does actually record uh, some script. But um, as you can see, the data set was not refreshed. And we can see the generated script uh, in the pane here. So let's take a look at the Office Script itself. So here we are in the code pane. We can see that the function is declared as async. That's required because we're using a function called fetch. Uh, the return type is a promise um, and it's of string type itself. That again is required. So uh, we're using a try catch um, to uh, handle errors. Here, um, I'm declaring some variables 
um, to generate the name of the new worksheet. Uh, here I uh, enter the URL for the CSV itself that we're trying to fetch data from. We're creating, um, we're using the fetch function here with the target uh, variable, for, which is the URL. We're converting that to text. Um, we then um, are splitting the return array um, using the new line character. Um, we now have an array called a response array, um, which lists uh, all the records so um, each record in turn can be split using the split function with the separator as a comma. Now in terms of uh, this line where we're declaring an array called first row, um, this is used um, because we are generating a table and to do that we need to specify the column uh, headings and that is uh, obtained from uh, row zero, that is the uh, row at the top of the table. Here we're getting the, um, the length of that first row. Um, this is so that we can determine the size of the table that we're about to create. So in this uh, for loop, we're taking each value from the first uh, row, the first record, um, we're uh, inputting them into the worksheet along um, the, the, the top of the worksheet, along the columns. On the next line, we are getting the address of the last cell in that row in the table. We then convert it to a string, and then we use um, that value uh, together with A1 to build the address string. And then we use that address string to extend or, or to create the table. We're using the add table function here. And then we're setting the format of the table. So after that, we are going to uh, build an array, uh, which will then be uh, input into that table. So first thing we do is declare a rows variable. It's a two-dimensional array, a string boolean number type. It's empty. Um, then we um, find the length of the response array, and we uh, assign that to a variable called len input array. And then we declare another um, empty array, this time it's one-dimensional, and it's also string boolean number type. And then we uh, iterate through the response array with its list of records, splitting each record by the comma separ separator. And then um, we are adding that split record to each uh, row of the table using the add row function. And after that, we are catching some errors. As mentioned earlier, here is the information about the limits using the fetch function within Excel. You can see the screenshot was taken from uh, an Excel add-ins help page. And this is one thing I want to mention. Office scripts and Excel add-ins both reference the same Excel model, Excel object model. That is, they're both programming Excel, but one uses an IDE and one uses Excel itself. So in this regard, our scripts is the same as VBA because VBA too used an inbuilt IDE. I wonder if the code pane in Office Scripts will be built upon to be more advanced and even become an embedded version of Visual Studio Code. After assigning the script to a button, it is the fetch function, not the async main method, that is preventing the operation of the button operating in Excel Desktop, as you can see here. Here is the VBA which uses the query tables.add method to obtain data from a URL. In my next video, I will show how to use Dropbox.com as part of a solution that uses Office Scripts to fetch data that bypasses the 5 million cells and 5 megabyte 
size limit. It uses a method called chunking. Check out my business website too.